Raising Kellen podcast. My name is Marsh Naidu and I blog at RaisingKellen.org where we curate resources for parents raising children with developmental delay and or disabilities. As always, remember the information provided on this podcast is purely educational and if you are seeking advice for your specific situation be sure to contact a trained professional on today's podcast i am also joined by bikindra easel who will be interning with us this summer on episode number 68, can you believe it? 68, we will be chatting with Ali Manning, a local Memphian who is a food scientist as well as children's book author. So grab your cup of coffee, put your legs up and join us for some awesome conversation. Ali, my name is Marsh. Um, this is a podcast, Raising Kellen, and basically the whole premise behind it is to empower and educate parents raising children with disabilities. And I would also like to introduce you to Mackindra. Mackindra Easel is summer interning with us this year. Mackindra, you go ahead with your introduction. Okay, so first off, I just wanted to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to experience what it's like to make and be on a podcast. My name is Mackendra Ezell, and I am 17 years old. I'm from Dysburg, Tennessee, and I will be a senior in the coming school year. I am really interested in making a podcast during my college years that will be Christian-based, which is why this experience is so important to me. So once again, thank you. Listen, Ali, I have a lot of faith in this young lady, and I know she is going to be doing great things. We're really interested in knowing more about you, Ali, and the work that you do. We want to know about your book, about being a food scientist. And uh, so please go ahead and, and tell us something about yourself. Yeah, so I am Allie Manning. I currently live live in Memphis, Tennessee, but I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, I uh, graduated from Alabama Annum University in Huntsville, which is an HBCU, and I received my degree in food science and technology. Uh, before I knew it, I was accepting a job offer right here in Memphis, Tennessee, and I moved here twelve years ago. <laughs> 12 years ago, Memphis has a way of, of, of holding you tight. And, and, tell you <laughs> and so um, I worked in the industry as a chemist and a food scientist and, uh, you know, branched out into consulting and have really been enjoying the work that I've been doing here in the city. What inspired you to get your book written? I mean, can I play with my food? First of all, it's an eye ca- or ear catching title. <laughs> what was the motivation behind uh, the, the book, Ali? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So throughout my career, you know, I have really gotten into more of my technical side. <laughs> the book really helped me tap into my tap into my creativity. Uh, I've always loved to balance and juggle creativity in my analytical mind, especially being a scientist. And so with the book, I began drawing. I got back to doing all the things that I love to do back in 2020 when the world shut down. I said, no, I need to figure out something. I need to remember, really remember the things that I love to do as a kid. And so I began drawing again and, and the book began to form. The story started to come and, you know, I would tell people I play with food for a living as, you know, kind of layman's term for what a food mm-hmm. scientist does. And um, it just stuck and it made sense to title and title the book, Can I Play With My Food? And yes, I say yes, because you know, that's a part of uh, learning. It's a part of exploration. And so as a food educator, so I, you know, I'm, I created food science for kids in the pen- during the pandemic as well. So it was a really incredible time for me to tap into my creativity and apply it to my career. Now, I, I don't want to get too much 
into the actual story itself because, guys, I highly recommend it. It actually, this interview with Ali is part of our Sizzling Summer series. So what we've done, Ali, is that we're compi- compiling books, um, movies, um, anything that actually indicates or shows that representation matters. And it is so important for our kids to have this experience across the board. Now, the the book as well has a somewhat of a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but does it have a more personal note to you as far um, as the characters are concerned? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, like I mentioned, I was getting back to drawing and the ideas started to form. And so the story is loosely based on my sister, Alexis, who has Downs. And so in the story, the two sisters, Nima and Lexi, uh, explore food and explore science and have big dreams at the end. And so, yes, the co-character Lexi is loosely based on my sister, Alexis. And so, yeah, it's absolutely personal because Um, Not only because of the food education aspect, but because of, you know, understanding that not all children with special needs are able to achieve all of their dreams. Um, My sister is not high functioning special needs. So I know that, um, you know, it's just an honor to do this with her and for her honor. Well, listen, we thank you. And I know McKendra is ready to go with her question. So I'm going to hand it over Kendra, go for it, girl. Okay, so the first question I have for you is, what has driven you to become the successful woman you are today? Oh, wow. That's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. You know what? Uh, in, even in the book, I reference, you know, making mistakes. And, the, you know, sometimes the, 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 um, the greatest lessons come from making mistakes. And honestly, that's what's driven me. My, my passion for food and science, my passion for com- community, and also understanding that making mistakes helps me to learn. <laughs> that's what's driven me to be successful. And, um, and you know, my parents have always been so, so successful, of, um, so supportive of my work and my interest. And so... You know, it, it's been a very nurturing environment for me to pursue all of my passions. Um, so can I follow up with another question real quick? Yeah. OK, so like, what advice do you have to like give to any young people who like want to become successful? Absolutely. Well, I would suggest first determining what success means to you. Does success mean uh, financial success? Does it mean family? Does it mean freedom and flexibility in your work as an entrepreneur? You know, what does success mean to you and define that? And then also, I would suggest to any young person, figure out what you're good at. You know, go with what you're inclined to do uh, inside so so that you can begin to work towards that uh, passion and that work that ultimately brings you the meaning to your life and helps you go along your life's path. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. (laughs) Ellie, what do you enjoy doing? We we talked about your work as a food scientist, which I would like to circle back to. Uh, We, we talked about you uh, writing, but are there any hobbies uh, that, that, that you interested in? Absolutely. So (laughs) 2020 was really that pivotal year for me and for all of us. It was it was incredibly tragic, but also amazing in so many ways. So um, I keep referencing joy. Uh, And so in that finding my joy, skating was one of the things that I love to do as a child, too. So I Mm -hmm. ended up getting back to roller skating and rollerblading. I was actually an ice skater when I uh, was little. So rollerblading was kind of the natural uh, next progression. But we got into roller skating and and lo and behold, next thing I know, uh, the Memphis Skater Hotties group was formed. (laughs) So we, it's, um, so during the pandemic, you know, I, video recorded myself skating and people would see it and say, oh my gosh, I love skating. I've got skates in the garage that got, that has dust on them. You know, like 
the whole nine. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid of skating, but I want to come. And so I said, come on out, come on out. So it was a community and it still is. We exist still to this day, but it's a community of women that meet up on Sunday mornings and skate. It's just fun. It's friendship. It's camaraderie. It was an opportunity then during the pandemic to just have a mental release and escape from life. And so now every season between, what is it, March and October, we meet Sunday morning at Bill Street Landing downtown. And it's a joy to see us out there. You should see it. People are driving by, taking pictures and all. So, yes, yeah, skating, any type of art and style uh, are my hobbies. And of course, food, 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 food. I'm a foodie at heart. Give the girls a shout out, uh, Addie. Hi to my skater hobbies crew. <laughs> I'll see y'all soon. All right. So food scientists, because this is, I'm a physical therapist by training. So, you know, I, I'm a movement specialist. So how would you break down being a food scientist? What are some of the things that that's involved with that title? Yeah, absolutely. So as food scientists, we apply all of the scientific scientific disciplines to food. So if you're interested in chemistry and math or agriculture, even design, there's an opportunity for food science, uh, food scientists, especially if you're a young person that's uh, got a little bit of creativity because in, in food science, especially in the food industry, we do a lot of research. We do a lot of innovation around new food technologies, new food products, how to, um, you know, match products or rework existing products. And so uh, it's a really interesting field to go in because we've got such a range of products and we've got issues within our food system. Right. So, you know, people that are solutions minded and innovative uh, minded it's a great profession for them. For our kids up here, like in Dyesburg, that are, we are more rule-based community, but someone listening out today um, that might be interested in pursuing food science, how can they get to know more about it, Ali? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're interested in food science and technology, the first thing to do is Google your local university um, or or it really would probably be at a university. Um, the program exists all over the nation, but it's such a niche program that many people don't always know about it. So get on Google, Google, you know, what a food scientist does, maybe look at some YouTube videos of what a food scientist does, and then go to your local university and see if they have the program and talk to someone. I think finding a mentor that has the same interests as, as you have is important. And so, um, yeah, that would be the path. And of course, if you're great at math, Kim, you know, you want to definitely uh, do well in those academics. But Kendra, are there any questions you would like to ask? I do want to become like a, a motivational speaker. And what advice would you give for me and like to like make that happen? To be a motivational speaker? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So are you familiar with, Toastmasters? Yes, sir. Okay, so if you're interested in speaking, I would get in front of as many people as you can and practice, um, especially Toastmasters, because they specialize in that. They, you know, give you particular prompts that help you grow your speaking um, muscle, so to speak. And so if you're motiv if you're also interested in motivational speaking, think about what you want to say and ask people what they want to hear. You know, if you've got a classmate that is uh, struggling with, um, you know, how to come out of her shell, you know, find something positive and, and affirming for her and then, you know, speak that into existence, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So, yeah, give that a try. Okay, thank you. You, you, you got to believe it before you speak it, I think. You just, yes. it's got to come from here. And um, with, with that being said, Ali, is there any, and before we close, uh, is there any message that you would like to kind of put out there to uh, for the listeners? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I sign my book, I say continue to find joy in childlike things. 
that helped me remember the things that I love to do as a child, because many times when you're working in corporate and you're going after your goals and you're going after, you know, um, societal pressures that are placed upon you, you know, you forget what you like to do. (laughs) I always encourage people to remember what you like to do. Uh, Remember what brings you joy and then begin to do that. And as you do it, opportunities will open up. People will come along. Books will be created. You know, I never even thought I'd be an author and to have accomplished that is such a a beautiful thing and to have the support Um, and, and to honor my sister in this way is beautiful. So another thing I would say is, um, do things with great intention. You know, uh, it's all it's important to number one, like you said, Marsh, you know, believe and then speak it into existence. I, I'm a huge believer in manifestation and how it's, um, opportun- uh, you know, things can come to fruition just because of your mind. So, you know, I think that that's an important thing to remember as well. Well, Ali, we are grateful for this opportunity to be speaking to you. Uh, We believe in you. We believe in the work that you're doing. And uh, guys, Ali spoke, can I play with my food? We have a copy that McKendra and I are going to work on, um, on doing a giveaway, Ali. So we're going to get that in the works. We we also going to work on on getting this podcast up. Uh, produce. So I'm looking forward to working with McKendra on, on getting this published as well, Thank which you. will hopefully be done within the next week, a week and a half. Um, Izzy, um, you've given us a amazing message to end off with, but for those folks that might want to know more about your work or uh, can you perhaps give us uh, some way to contact you? Absolutely. 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 So whether you're interested in food science for kids or consulting services, if you're interested in book signing and reading, um, follow along um, on my Instagram at Ali, A-L-I Manning underscore Carpe Diem, or just visit my website, mm-hmm. Ali-Manning.com. That's going to be the easiest thing to find out all the cool things I have going on. Have an amazing day and an amazing weekend. And thank you so much for joining us on the Raising Killing podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to us today. Uh, if you would like to contact us, you can reach us at raisingkillen.com. Also, we would really appreciate a rate and review on your podcast platform. Um, Remember, that's how we get found. And guys, we have that awesome book giveaway coming up. And McKendra is going to post that on Instagram. Um, Until we see you guys the next time, as always, remember, get to the top of your mountain. This is Marsh Naidu signing off.